So you yourself have been involved in practice for many years. And so I wonder whether you can say something about your practice and also how the gradual maturation, the understanding uh, that occurred from that then translated itself into you know, your teaching and your consulting, your working with people. It's hard to know where one's practices start because it's like a question I get, well, when were you born? And you know, <laughs> when did you become aware? <laughs> and when did you forget and get confused again? So it like goes on forever and ever. Um, but uh, at, at the personal level, uh, for me, probably just for me personally, um, I think sports was a very important part of my practice issue because I was always very much into sports. Um, when I was in college, well, that of course was both individual and team, so it got me sensitized to teams. I think whenever we work with teams, we always ask people, first question is, when have you been, ever, ever been part of a great team? Think of a theater troupe, think of a music ensemble, think of a sports team, it doesn't really matter. But at some level, it's all the same. But then also, you can take any of those and you can see the personal side of it. Okay, so how do I become a musician? How do I become an athlete capable of being part of an athletic team? Which doesn't mean a lot. You could be, you know, all kinds of stages, but there's always that personal level. When I was in college, I had my first real introduction to uh, Asian traditions. Now, in fact, it happened much earlier. Um, I grew up in Los Angeles. My best friend was Japanese. So I kind of grew up in part in a Japanese household. So I always had this deep interest in particularly the Eastern Asian traditions, uh, Japan, China. Uh, uh, they were a very big part of my growing up. So probably not entirely surprising that my first real serious immersion in a, um, in a cultivation tradition that wasn't Western, because obviously I grew up in a, in a Christian home. Uh, there was there's plenty of cultivation in Christianity. You just have to look for it. It's kind of hidden. <laughs> but that's another story about the evolution of Western religions. Um, but it's not hidden in Buddhism. And so my first real experience was at a Zen retreat. Of course, the term Zen is the Chinese, excuse me, the Japanese translation of the Chinese term, Chan. So um, Chan is a very interesting tradition in China because it really, Buddhism is a very fluid sort of religion. In fact, the Dalai Lama always says Buddhism is not a religion, it's a science. It's the science of consciousness, or a approach to the science of consciousness. Um, but it's very fluid. So Tibetan Buddhism is very different than uh, Vietnamese Buddhism. It's very different than Chinese Buddhism. Because Buddhism itself is, is, a, is, a, is a tradition of practices which tends to evolve a lot depending on the context. In China, it started to integrate with Taoism very early. And that's how you got Chan. So Chan is, or Zen, is, is an approach to Buddhism that's, that's very minimalistic. Not a lot of theory. Tibetan Buddhism is very elaborate. And in fact, in the roots of Indian source of this, if you understand Indian culture, it's very, very, very intellectual. Um, but in, in Chan, it becomes kind of streamlined and very direct about experience and, and cultivation practice, sitting practice. So I did my first meditation retreat probably when I was uh, 20 years old, 20, 21 in college, and it was a Zen retreat. And it was just the right kind of thing for me because, um, uh, again, I had this deep interest in Eastern Asian cultures. And of course, I'd read a lot, but I had never really had an opportunity to be immersed, even for a few days, uh, in when, whenever Zen is established in any area, they establish a city monastery and a country monastery, and the monks will move back and forth. Obviously, the country monastery is more for real contemplation. It's a natural environment for that. But it's very important to do it in the city also, because you're trying to transform your, your mind-body system wherever you are. So I was at the uh, country monastery that was first established, first Zen uh, country monastery in the U.S., called Tassajara in California. So just being in that community, in that physical setting for, for three or four days was very short, but I, I learned that the cats were really different. Everything was really different. You could just feel there was something really different here. Uh, so um, that, that was where it started, and it was, again, a very uh, fitting start for me. On our website, globalleadership.tv, you will find additional footage, other dialogues with innovation leaders from around the world, and also the hands-on practices that help them and their organizations to move from inspiration to real change.